Hi, Army Trumpet here. I was uh, recently watching one of Grey Archer's uh, videos where he was bear shaft testing, uh, that's uh, testing the stability of his arrows without fletching. And uh, in one of his videos, he asked himself a question as to why do his arrows feel like they have less power after he fletches or feathers them compared to when he has the bear shaft test. And it got me thinking a little bit about what happens to the arrow when you add feathers um, and just how the, how the arrow generally behaves. <clears throat> and I was thinking uh, two things are really affected when you start adding your fletchings. One, the aerodynamics changes greatly, and that's why the fletching is put on, to help guide the arrow through straightening out its flight path. Uh, another thing is the mass of the arrow. Uh, first thing I'm going to address here is the, uh, the aerodynamics portion. When you have the bare shaft arrow, uh, for sake of argument, this pen is the arrow. Right here, see if I can get this pointed the right way, this is one of the most aerodynamically perfect items you have. It has a point, it's a long smooth body, and a slightly tapered end. It cuts through the air, very little disturbance if any. But, uh, and that's shown this little bottom diagram. Here it is. You see the arrow here. The outer lines is the air stream. The only disturbance is right here at the back where the air curls around behind the knock of the arrow, creating a small vacuum. It doesn't skew the arrow's flight much at all. But as soon as you add the fletching to the arrow, you have the middle picture. Again, the air comes over the tip, scoots around the shaft of the arrow, all the way back to the fletching. Here you see Okay, I'm trying to do this through a mirror image. The air comes around, has to move around the fletching a little bit, because it does still occupy space, and then it swirls at the tail under the fletching and the knock. Here it goes not only to the side, but over the feather, creates a small vacuum, and then another small vacuum behind the knock. These vacuums will slow the arrow's path, even just a little bit. Also, as soon as you uh, introduce the fletching, what is their job? It's to correct crooked arrow syndrome and drag the arrow back into a straight path. And here it is, it finally ends up going straight into your target. Even on a bare shaft test, as proficient as you may be on this, you will rarely get the absolutely perfect arrow. I've seen Grey Archer shoot as much as 15 yards away from his target with the bare shaft, and there's almost no wobble in the arrow. It's incredible how precise he can be. But again, there's that little bit of human error, a little bit of mechanical error when you fire the bow. You may just vibrate a little bit to the side, just a little, little pull here or there, and that will force the feathers or the fletchings to turn with the arrow and then straighten themselves as they keep cutting through the air. Again, this will slow the arrow and decrease its power when it hits the target. Uh, next, in a moment, I'm going to talk a little bit about the addition of the mass. Um, I'm not going to get into any heavy formulas, just a little discussion as to how that influences the arrow. All right, now we're uh, going to talk about the mass, or the influence of the addition of the mass when you uh, fletch your arrows. When I bought these arrows from Gold Tip, these are the Expedition Hunter uh, 5575. I believe it's 8.3 grain per inch. This is a 29 and a half inch shaft. 100 grain easy pull tip. I don't remember the grain here, but it's just a standard knock. Um, see so here, with just the bare shaft, this is 365 or 
grain. The addition of the feather, very lightweight material, it is now a 375 grain arrow. So if you're shooting your bare shaft test and you're pulling your bow back and you're, you, you're well practiced, you have your same constant draw. Your arm's always out straight, your shoulder same position, you've got your finger corner of the mouth or your cheekbone or wherever you happen to have your anchor. You do it a thousand times in a row, it's always the same right here. Let's say you're drawing the AMO standard of 28 inches and you draw 28 inches every time you pull so you're getting your flat rate of 55 pounds which is what my bow is rated. You pull back 55 pounds every time. 55 pounds reacting on a 365 grain shaft will not treat the arrow the same way as 55 pounds of force pushing the 375 grain shaft, which is what this is now with the fletching. If you have plastic veins on, it's even more drastic a change. This would be a 365 grain shaft with a 403 grain with the addition of the plastic veins. That's 110% the mass of the bear shaft after you fletch it. With these feathers, it's only 102.8% or 103% of its original mass. And, okay, fine, it's a 3% difference. That's not that much. It is, though. Um, when you start dealing with the laws of inertia and then uh, Newton's second law, the greater the mass of an object, the greater force needed to accelerate it. That's a constant in our universe. I mean, this object that is at rest will want to stay there until a force pushes on it, either to the side or in the string's case, forward. If you do not increase the force behind your uh, arrow or increase the weight of your bow, It'll still get that 55 pound draw and push it forward. A heavier arrow, even though slightly heavier, will react more slowly than a lighter arrow. The one perk to having a heavier arrow is, again on the inertia side, after it gets moving, it has much more kinetic energy. It will want to move farther. A heavier arrow will fly through the air more easily to a point. You get that point of diminished returns when the uh, object is too heavy to fly. But in the case of arrows, we're not hitting that. A lighter arrow, though it may react more quickly off of the string, doesn't have enough mass to cut through the air and hit a target with as much force as its heavier counterpart. Again, it's all a system of checks and balances. Do you want a light arrow? that will fly off the string very quickly? Or do you want a heavier arrow that may fly off the string a little more slowly? You lose a couple feet per second, but it will penetrate a target. If you're shooting paper target, you probably want a lighter weight arrow, especially if you're an indoor shooter. Lighter weight arrow because you have no side to side wind resistance with any breezes. If you're a hunter, you want the heavier arrow it will ignore side-to-side -side wind resistance excuse me and it will also penetrate your target which for hunters is very very important that's also why they get heavier arrowheads which is another discussion altogether on how that influences the flight of the arrow but I hope any of this information may have been helpful again your arrow gets heavier when you fletch it Two, three, up to 10 or 11 percent and if you're always drawing 55 or 60 pounds all the time your bow cannot push the heavier arrow as quickly as the light.